already installed, installed on here is a, uh, an adapter to fit to your uh, compression bending joint. So that's the same compression bending joint uh, that you would be using for three-point bending if you wanted to. Um, this can kind of live in here, and um, we'll show you how to switch to the one uh, for the three-point bending in a second. Is there a way to lock the opposition? In that case, I would stick with the fixed compression plates, so you have those. And it's even though that this is kind of for use with the 300 kilonewton load, and those are designed for the 100 kilonewton load, um, the plates themselves have a similar capacity, and we can get you an adapter. Actually, it is the same adapter. You can use this adapter to use the 200 millimeter, 100 kilonewton compression plates as well. Okay. So I would just use the non-articulating compression plates if you're really worried about that. Is that socket greased? Which socket? Is there, is there a ball yeah. socket? Yes, 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 yeah. It's probably the grease is molybdenum disulfide, so we can get you the plug and work out. So you can get go to 200 also with the other, with the adapter? Yes. Yeah, so this, not to get sidetracked, but this uh, adapter has this small thread in it, which is similar to... this thread here. So this would thread in here, which would thread into your compression bending joint right here. So you have two compression bending adapters, one's for the 100 kilonewton, one's for the 300 kilonewton. So stacked up, you have your lower compression plate, your upper compression plate, and then your uh, upper bending joint uh, with the compression bending adapter installed. So what we're going to do now is we're going to bring the cross head down on this adapter. Um, this is probably the best, easiest way to do it with one person. Uh, there would be a way to do it with two people if you were to kind of insert the um, upper joint, but then um, have somebody rotate the nut on the uh, top portion of it. Um, this works really well with tension setups, uh, that it articulates, there is a tendency for it to be missed out of alignment, so when I bring it down I'm going to kind of peer to the top of it to make sure everything kind of fits together.
you do have your touch load alarm, which is, as I said earlier, if it detects a certain rate of change, so it's not necessarily an over limit alarm, meaning that it reached the capacity of the load cell, but if it sees the forces rising to a certain degree, it'll uh, uh, shut the system off. So at this point, it's probably best to go to our jog wheel. Is it automatic or? It's, auto it's, it's automatic, you don't need to turn it on. And usually at a certain point when I see some threads sticking out, I'll go to the top load cell bolt and I'll just tighten from there. And in that way it'll kind of bring the uh, uh, joint and upper compression plate out. Is the inside diameter of that load cell tapered at all so there's any forgiveness or will it hit like a hard? There's a taper on the joint slightly. Um, but something to note when we're installing the, uh, either the fixed tension or the universal tension for this um, is that there's a little pin uh, right here and that pin lines up with four um, slots at 90 degree angles from each other on the loads. And that kind of helps orient uh, this upper joint um, either such that the grips face outward in a normal configuration or the grips face uh, the optical extent side. So essentially that's the compression setup. Um, so remember our limit switches. A good way to set up a limit switch for this is to either, uh, so you have your sample height, you know the size of the sample that you're gonna put in here. Um, either take the sample height, place it in there, maybe remove the sample, jog the cross head down, you know, maybe 25% of the distance that's in there. and then set your limit switch. All right, so to remove, we're gonna reverse the process. Is the articulating uh, flattening based on some ASTM standard? Is that is it common to use that then to fix flattening? There are certain standards that do require it. Uh, off the top of my head, I know there's a concrete testing standard that they recommend using an articulating uh, uh, compression plate. So I'll let you guys decide how you want to deal with that compression plate. Um, it's relatively heavy. Um, I think it's about 50 kilograms. 
So whether you guys want to do a team lift with it or whether um, you want to employ some sort of lifting apparatus, I've seen I've seen various things done. Migo, I might need your help with this to okay, yeah. pop this out. So I'll kind of give you some of the back of you. Can, uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So now we're going to put on our 100 kilonewton load cell. So to do that, you need this adapter plate. And the adapter plate fits on the bottom of the cross head. There's a little recess that it fits in. The cell is attached to the bottom of the load cell mounting plate with the logo in the upward direction. Okay. 